Hello, today is August 14th. I am Michael Walsh. I work at the Yonkers Public Library and I'm currently in, in Yonkers and I'm with Ruth Kambar, who is a representative of the, of the Assyrian Studies Association. She's an oral historian and archivist of the Assyrian American diaspora. We are here with John Muldoon. Um, before proceeding with the interview, John, could you just state your name and your location? Sure. My name is Sean Muldoon. I live in Hillsboro, New Jersey. Thanks, John. John, do you give us permission to upload this interview to the Yonkers Public Library a Digital Archive and also to the Assyrian Studies Association and the Library of Congress websites? Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, John, did you grow up in Yonkers? Yes, I did. Where did you grow up in Yonkers? Which part of Yonkers? I grew up in South Yonkers, on Franklin Avenue, off of Riverdale Avenue. Did your family visit any particular places in Yonkers? Um, and we were, as kids, uh, probably St. John's Church was where we went. Uh, and uh, for me, uh, some time spent at the YMCA. Those were probably the the principal places that I, you know, went to. What activities did you participate in at the YMCA? Uh, swimming. And then at the church, it was uh, basketball and and Sunday services. Who lived in your Yonkers household with you? Um, my mother, my father, and my three brothers. Where are you in the birth order of your I'm brothers? number one. The smartest and the best looking one. <laughs> I think that is. Right? What's the age difference of you and your brothers? Uh, uh, there's a three years difference between me and my next youngest brother, and then uh, Tommy's five years difference, and David's six years um, six years difference. So three, five, and six years difference between my brothers. What are your parents' full names? Uh, John Martin Muldoon and Beatrice Julia Benjamin. I assume you wanted our maiden name. Uh, yes, we do. Yeah, thank you. Do your pa parents have siblings? Do they have what? Uh, siblings? Siblings, uh, I'm I, sorry. Yeah, yeah. My father has one brother in Yorktown Heights, and uh, my mother had one brother um, who was a, a deceased now. And his name? Frederick Benjamin. Thank you. Um, what are your grandparents' names? My grandparents' name uh, were uh, on the on the Assyrian side was uh, Papa Joda and, and Mama Jitja. <laughs> <laughs> That's. <laughs> do you remember his full name? Yes, you know it, right? Yeah. David Jacob Benjamin. Yeah, David uh, Benjamin. And um, Julia. Yeah, that's where my mother got the Julia. Yeah. But the, they were rarely ever called that. <laughs> Does your family have a religious background? I'm sorry, what kind of background? Religious. I wouldn't say we were. I'm not sure if I understand the question, uh, religious background. I mean, we went to church, so is that considered religious background or no? Yeah. Yeah. You're Episcopalian. Right. It's in the Episcopal Church. Yeah. Mm 
Um, were there any other, were there any languages besides English spoken at your house growing up? Sure, uh, Assyrian. What was your household like growing up? It was, uh, you know, we were, we lived in a working class neighborhood, third floor of a five story walk up. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at it now, it's probably tight quarters. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we were pretty comfortable, you know, with no complaints about how we grew up. What schools did you attend in Yonkers? Uh, PS 27. Uh, a Hawthorne Junior High School and Yonkers High School when it was on Linden Street. And, and yeah. Pop -up. Did you pursue a post high school education? Yes, I did. Uh, I have a, 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 a bachelor's degree in, in biology and uh, I have a, a MBA degree from Pace University. What did you do when you graduated? Where did well, you work? I went back to graduate school after working, coming out of college. So I started off as a pharmaceutical sales rep. Uh, I went back to graduate school, got my MBA, uh, went into public accounting. I got certified as a CPA and that was my early track. Okay, thank you. Do you know anything about your parents schooling? Like, you know, how much education they had? Sure. Uh, my mother graduated high school and went uh, to a business school. I think it was a one or two year business school. Um, one of the, it, it's, I don't think it's Kathy Gibbs, but it was something similar to that. I, I'll have to get the name. Um, I know she knows it. She mentioned it the other day. Just so stick. My father was um, uh, questionable whether he graduated from uh, high school. Because uh, he, he joined the Navy when he was uh, underage. So I think he joined the Navy when he was 17. But I'm not sure he completed high school. Oh, was that during um, a particular war, like World War yeah. II? Or yeah, that would be around World War II. Oh, okay. John, what high school did your mom go to? I, I believe she was at Yonkers High School. And um, was it Berkeley Business School? Yes, it was Berkeley. Thank you. She's good. Shirley's here. Ah, uh, Shirley's there. Uh, hello, Cheryl. Is that, I have my earphones on. <laughs> um, so, what did your father do when he got out of the Navy? He he uh, he worked as a sheet metal mechanic. You know, uh -huh. he was a member of the local union thirty eight. Do you know anything about the education of your grandparents? Uh, probably not as much as Ruth does, uh, but there, my grand, my grandmother, uh, her education was probably chopped up because she was moving around at the time uh, they were immigrating to this country. My grandfather started off uh, in dental studies, but never completed it. Thank you. Um, Ruth, did you want to ask the cultural identity questions? Sure. So, John, what does it mean to you to be an Assyrian? It means uh, it, was a, it was a good childhood, having a, a kind of bicultural growing up, if you will. Um, uh, the food was great. <laughs> As we all know, and um, you know, it, there was just—I uh, think—the fact that we we had our own separate culture from everyone else that was unique, but very well received. Uh, uh, you know, in those days. Thank you. And you've already told us, Dad um, was not a Syrian, and what is he? Irish. Irish. And um, are there any other family ethnicities in your family? No, that's, that's basically it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And do you speak Assyrian? Uh, just kind of the, the popular phrases, some curse words, 
and uh, know the foods that you like. Okay. And um, do you speak any other languages? Uh, probably a little Spanish in the same in the same mode. <laughs> And have you explained to a non-Assyrian what it means to be a Syrian? Oh my God, those those are a pain in the butt because, you know, the question is uh, most Assyrians get annoyed. Oh, you you you're from Sy you're you're Syrian, and then you have to start explaining, you know, uh, Assyrian and Assyria, and um, so I'm sorry. What was the question again? So how do you explain to them? You just told them. Yeah, you just you know you tell your family's history and 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 you know you know many people don't know what Persia was and you, so you kind of got to get into a little bit of a history lesson and 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 talk about how you know you know your grandparents emigrated to this country and and, and a deeper story with with uh, our great grandfather. And. Um, in your household, did you practice any Assyrian traditions? Uh, beside eating the food, probably not. <laughs> and tell me what your favorite Assyrian foods were. Oh, uh, the, the Domo Chalami, Domo Bamjari Kiyadi Biyadi, um, uh, Chudash, those are probably my top three. Do you make any of these foods? I make them all all the time. I, I claim to be the last of the great Persians, but not everyone believes me. You'll probably fight me a good battle on that one. I don't know. <laughs> David might disagree. I don't know. <laughs> David. Uh, your brother, David Benjamin. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and did you ever eat Assyrian food outside of the house? I, I've been to Persian restaurants, but it's not really like Assyrian food. I mean, it's similar, but it's, it's, it's different. It's very distinctive. And um, do you celebrate any Assyrian holidays? No. And do you know any Assyrian music? No. Have you ever heard it? Yes, I have. Yeah. You know, my uncle used to have some records that he used to play and, you know, and watch my grandmother dance to it. <laughs> and who was your uncle? Uh, uh, uncle Freddie, Uncle Freddie Benjamin. And um, did you ever play any Assyrian games when you were a kid or now? Not that I know of, but I think there might have been a card game that was an Assyrian card game, but I couldn't tell you the name of it. And were both of your parents born in the United States? Yes. Okay. Where was mom? Uh, New Britain, Connecticut. Okay. And do you know when your family emigrated to the United States? The, um, not, not totally sure on that. Um, so on my father's side and, um, you know, uh, on my mother's side, you have actually have the documentation on that. So, uh, I don't remember exactly what year that was. To label an era or maybe a, a decade. Oh, uh, I guess that was, um, I want to say, you know, between, you know, uh, 1900, 1920. Okay. Yeah. And do you know what um, caused that migration to the United States? Well, what's going, what's been going on currently and the, the, the genocide of, of the, you know, principally Christian Assyrians that, that has continued to this day. And do you know who perpetrated the experience that your relatives may have uh, left Persia because of? Uh, who was perpetrating it? Yeah, I mean, my understanding was that it predominantly was uh, Muslim based. And um, can you, do you know anything about their path or journey to the United States? The, um, you know, Probably some small tales, but you you actually in your book put together good history and and you know looking at the passports of where both your grandmother and my grandmother were and and the conditions they came to this country and and some of the abuse they occurred uh, along the way is um, you know you know part of what I actually remember. Okay, so talk about that a little if you can. Um, so when you say like little stories, like what? 
Well, the story was, uh, you know, you know, my, my grandmother and grandfather didn't know each other, but ended up coming to this country under a prearranged marriage. Okay. So uh, when I got to the States, I got married. Who, who um, arranged that marriage? That I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. And um, did they, so did they come over? Were they already married when they came into the United States? That's a good question, but I don't believe so. Um, and so then they arrived. Do you know around how old they were when they arrived in the United States? Um, I, I believe my, my grandmother was about 16 when she came to the States, 16, somewhere, maybe a little bit younger. I mean, she was, she was moved around, um, you know, by the, the mercenaries there. Uh, but I believe it was around 16 when she came here. When you, when you say mercenary, what do you mean? Well, there were, you know, the, the you know, you know, Papa Judy uh, did that as one of his livelihoods that, uh, um, you know, groups that were helping the, the um, at that time, the oppressed people to get out of harm's way. And, you know, my grandmother was moved from Iran to Iraq. Um, I believe she spent some time in France as well. Uh, you know, those are some of the key things. And, you know, through, the, through the missionaries? Yes, the missionaries, yeah. I said mercenary, I meant missionaries. Okay. Yeah. And as a result, you know, she spoke, um, she spoke seven languages through all those travels as a young kid and, mm -hmm. and wrote over half of them. So she was fairly fluent in terms of linguistically. Did she come alone? I believe she came alone. Um, do you know what happened to her parents at all or no? No. I don't. Um, no. Okay. And my, my mother might know that, but like I said, if you, as a sidebar, if you take some separate questions, Ruth, that are now, I could just hit her, not with a whole long sheet that she gave me here, but I can, I can get it in chunks out of her, but not in this kind of, Format. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And um, overall, what do you think the impact is on your family of coming over during that time for those reasons? Does it, is there an impact? It um, you know it, it it resonates in today's world, right? That that um, it, it was very difficult <laughs> to get to this country, the land of opportunity, and um, and so knowing those struggles, you know, had a big impact. You, you know, you respected your grandparents and as we got older and understood their struggles, there was, uh, you know, you appreciate, you know, everything they did and, and everything that you have. And have you ever had a desire to go back to Persia to see your, where your family came from? No. So you don't wish to have ever lived there? No. And do you have any particular artifacts from your family's homeland? Uh, you know, really the only artifacts were some of the older pictures of which David has most of them, yeah. um, if not all of them. So he, you know, he has a pretty good selection that might fill some gaps in terms of all the images that you collect. And are there any family stories um, that you know of that your grandparents experienced uh, that you'd like to share with us today? Ah, sure. Well, one of my favorite ones is, you know, they've always talked to, you know, my grandparents talked about their, their parents, which were our great grandparents. And, and, and Papa Judah was built up as a man bigger than life, right? He was a big man. He goes, when he, when he shook your hand, blood would squeeze out the fingertips. And, and that was uh, one of the story. The great, the, the big storyteller in the family was actually Ruth's uh, grandfather, Uncle Nick. He, uh, or my Uncle Nick, he was uh, fantastic at telling stories. And um, uh, I'll give you another uh, story. We, he was at a party at my house on, on number number of years ago and I had some friends over and 
and um, one of my Israeli friends, and he started telling the story about, because you know, I used to tease him about the curd suit and the daggers and all the things that he, that he wore. And um, he starts telling the story how they uh, what, how they took care of people was bury them in the sand, but leave their head exposed and put honey on it so the bugs eat, uh, you know, and everything eats their head off. You know? That was those are thrilling stories. By the way. <laughs> that was insane, didn't he? But I, I will tell you one other uh, little uh, great funny story. It was on his 90th birthday, actually, and it was that uh, we had it at Dave's house in Yonkers, up on uh, near Lake Avenue, and I think he was on North Broadway. And I always used to tease Uncle Nick to say, "Oh yeah, you keep telling me about this this herd suit and." Uh, and uh, you know, so forth, and well, he on his birthday, he 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 has a box there. He goes, take a look in there, and he had the suit and he had the dagger, you know, all the things we kind of doubted a little bit, and then of course, you know, we had a few drinks and he put the suit on, and and it, I got to dig that video out because that's uh, I uh, that would be uh, something very special, but uh, and. You know, it was kind of funny too. I'll tell you one other story because this really sits in my mind that day. Uh, he got, uh, he came and it was his birthday. He wanted, you want to drink Uncle Nick, and he, he liked, uh, I believe it was scotch, and put a scotch in water. Well, you know, we didn't, you know, 90 years old. You don't want to give a guy a drink. He sent it back because it was too weak. You know, he said, "Don't give me a real drink." So, anyway, the uh, he was uh, he was a great storyteller and. Uh, and uh, I, I do remember him growing up in our apartment building, him coming home from work, and he always came down our street. And I think he had like a, a brownish bronze um, Chevy Impala in the days. And, you know, there's always a, a wave and hello and so forth. So it's pretty nice. Thank you. And um, did your family, you, you mentioned that mom was born in New Britain. So yeah. they in New Britain. Do you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, you know, she, she grew up in farm life. Um, you know, some of the pictures that uh, that you've collected and, and others I've seen or, you know, Uncle Sammy was up there and, you know, apparently that was a, that was a big gathering place for, for, uh, you know, many of the Assyrians and, um, and, uh, you know, beside that, it, you know, it, it just kind of was a fast forward uh, when she moved to Post Street, uh, you know, Cold Water Flat on Post Street, I believe. Uh, and that's where, you know, she started her schooling and everything else in Yonkers. You know why they moved to Yonkers? I think it just got difficult to run a farm. Uh, I could be wrong, but, you know, I, I don't have all those details. But put that on a list of my mother questions, all right? I might know an answer. She might have an opinion on that. <laughs> anyway, um, so did you participate growing up in any Yonkers Assyrian Association events? Uh, the only thing we did was, uh, you know, I went to a Syrian school um, right around the corner from um, Hawthorne Junior High School. And um, you know, so we were there to try and learn the language. You know, I was pretty young, I guess. My brother Rob used to go for the chai, um, and uh, you know, that's kind of all I remember about it. Teacher was. Excuse me. Was the teacher? Do you know? Y yes, um, John. Help me out here. His name was John. Was it John? Uh, excuse me. John Amir. I I believe that could have been him. I see. I don't, I don't know. I I only know of Robbie Lucy being a teacher. Yeah. No, there was a, a John. I think it was John Amir. Interesting. Yeah. And it was that at the club that was on Riverdale Avenue then? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, see, I, I'm unfamiliar with that club. I've only seen it in pictures from the back. Yeah. I don't, I only learned it recently that it was near Hawthorne. Yeah. And it was, um, yeah, we were, I was pretty young. I, I want to, Probably guess it was maybe I was six or seven when we went there, and Robbie's uh, maybe maybe it's a little bit older. Did you ever go to the other club on uh, Ludlow Street by St. Peter's? Yes. Okay. 
Do you remember any events there at all? I, the only event I remember there was for, um, you know, Uncle Dave Jacobs. Um, he was, I believe he was being honored for his work uh, that he did do with helping the Syrians and so forth. Yeah, uh, I think he, he be, was um, a Syrian man of the year. Yes. I forget what year. Yeah. Um, and uh, are there any particular cemeteries that your family uses or where your your parents? Yeah, I, I mean, on, on the Assyrian side, they're, uh, you know, they're in the uh, Oakland cemetery, cemetery. Are they in the Assyrian section, do you know? Uh, they're, I don't know what the Assyrian section is, but I believe they're pretty close to, you know, Emma and some of the others in there. Okay, so yeah, they're right in that area. Yeah. Um, as you drive in on the right side or on the yes. left? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I briefly mentioned New Britain before, as you did, but um, did you ever do anything with that community, that Assyrian community? No. Okay. And um, so do you know of an Assyrian homeland? Do you know what Assyria was? Vaguely. And do you, did you ever hear the phrase, the Assyrian question? No. Okay. So do you believe that it's possible that Assyrians may actually earn the right to self-govern in the Middle East? I'd love to see that. What do you think the benefits of that would be? Uh, stabilization, normalization, um, uh, the Syrians uh, that that we've had in our family, extended friends, are always to me appear very well balanced, good natured, caring, you know, very human in their approach to people, and a certain kindness. And um, yet, you know, they were they were doers, and and you know they had their struggles, but they they overcame many of them along their their long journeys here. Now, would you describe your family as political in um, Assyrian causes? No, a, a little bit. I mean, I mean, I follow it, and, and thank you for the stuff you put up. So I kind of follow that and trying to catch up a little more on the history and you know that that that's you know a lot that's missing. And to any Assyrian um, periodicals. Uh, podcasts? No, just the one you, you, you have. Um, and do you see a connection between your Assyrian identity and the ancient Assyrians? Mm, probably not. Okay. Why? What do you mean? Yeah, I'm not sure I understand the question exactly. Um, you think we're descendants of the ancient Assyrians? I, I think we are, yes. Okay. And how does being an Assyrian living in diaspora impact your life in any way, or does it? Mm, I can't say that it does or doesn't. Yeah. And is there anything that I didn't ask you today that you would like to tell or share for the record? Um, Maybe about yeah, I mean, I think you covered a lot of you know a lot of good stuff here. It's usually, usually when we all get in a room and start talking stories, a lot a lot of things kind of flow out naturally. But you know, it it was a great upbringing. I had the I had uh, I was fortunate that uh, that you know my my grandmother and, uh, and my my grandparents and my my uncle lived two stories up in the same apartment building. So. I could eat one meal and then go up and have an Assyrian meal and um, and you know and enjoy the culture that that that, that was close knit and uh, cousins like you and, and 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 the Jacobs were all within you know within walking distance of each other so um, you know it was uh, you know it was it was a good it was a good life like that. Can you state what your grandparents' names were? I don't think we actually said that. Oh, uh, uh, well, it's, um, uh, what's it, uh, 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 Teddy or Deirdor Benjamin and, uh, Alice or Almas, um, uh, Sergeant. 
Thank you. And that's it. I appreciate that's it. it. All right. I appreciate it very much. All right. I hope it was helpful. Okay. Yes. Well, yes. Great. Michael, nice meeting you. Good luck with everything. Let me know how the project goes.